In today's episode, we're here inside Lyon, where you can see the scenery has changed quite a lot. Welcome to In The Loop. Hello folks and welcome to the Watercrest Line. Now before we go any further, it's time for a quick far look around the railway to see what's been happening since the last episode. Well, let's start off here with Canadian Pacific, our merchant navy. Here we are inside the smoke box at the front of a locomotive. And as you can see, what a transformation has happened over the last few weeks. Above my head, you can see the superheater header and elements. Now, superheating is a process where steam is harvested, goes into the header, down through the elements. They then get piped back through the large flue tubes and get heated up even more. It takes out any moisture. They become superheated before going down into the cylinders. They get used. They come out through here, the blast pipe, out the chimney, which is now fitted. And that is when you get your distinctive chuff sound. So some big steps forward. Further towards you guys, the floor of the smoke box is now being manufactured and fitted, and you can see down there, that is where the third cylinder is. These were three cylinder locomotives, so incredibly powerful indeed. Now on the exterior side, the uh, smoke box reflectors at the front have been trial fitted, and the team are currently working down doing the boiler bands. These essentially um, cover the gaps of the cladding, hold them together, and act like big Jubilee clips in short. But once painted, they do look absolutely incredible. And finally, at the back of the engine, the back head cladding, that has all now been manufactured. It's currently being painted, which is why you can't see all of it at the moment. Inside the firebox, the grate has now been fitted and they're making the linkage at the moment. And they're getting ready to cast the brick arch. And this has a couple of functions, partly to protect the tube plate from any cold air that goes through that firebox door, and also to ensure complete combustion to get the most out of every ounce of coal. Now, by the time you watch this, our steam illumination services will have started running. But at the moment, at the time of filming, the carriage shop is in overdrive, kitting out all of our coaches with beautiful lights inside and outside, and also doing some examinations as well. So Neil Below is currently doing some brake block replacements. Again, some of the stuff you just do not see day to day. Now, while we haven't been running trains, P-Way have taken the opportunities with both hands to do some track work. They're currently doing some sleeper replacements behind me down here at Ropley, and they've actually chosen quite a nice day for it. But there's one thing that everyone loves to see, and it is this, the wonderful Wickham Trolley. And if you do want to find out a little bit more about Wickham Trolley, then we have already done an episode, so do go and check that one out. Well, a lot's happening here at the Watercrest Line. Now for today's episode, we're here inside Lion, our Class 50, which as you can see, the engine room has become a little less spacious than when we last saw it. And that is because the main generator is now back in, a huge achievement for the team. So without further ado, let's go back a few weeks and see just how it all unfolded. Today we've put the overhauled main generator back onto the power unit in readiness for it to go back into the locomotive. The engine and generator went back into the loco, cranes back in, uh, and now we have the long process of connecting everything back up and get the loco back into service. On New Year's Eve in 2021, the loco was out doing the inspection of the line for the lights trains and suffered a power to earth fault. So obviously had to return to shed investigate it and trace the, the issue to the main generator which meant removal of of the uh, complete power unit uh, in October 22. When we took it out we had to take out the uh, engine attached to the generators because in fact we were trying to fix one of the generators which had failed but in order to get that generator out we had to take the whole engine and the other two generators because they're all attached to each other. And so they had to come out as a, as a one uh, and be lifted out. Uh, and then when they were outside the locomotive, the three generators were then detached from the actual power unit. Split the engine from the generator, 
and the generator was sent away to uh, be inspected and cleaned and uh, good uh, looking over. It was really a silver lining because we were very disappointed when the engine failed but it gave us this great opportunity to uh, give the inside of the engine compartment a thorough clean. It was absolutely filthy with many, many years, probably 30 plus years of dirt and oil ingrained. So we used a steam um, cleaner and managed to get uh, all the dirt out and then we started painting and we managed to paint uh, the floor with special red floor paint uh, and then the walls and the ceiling of uh, the roof uh, with, with grey grey paint uh, and uh, so it looks very much better now um, so we're looking forward to putting the engine and the generators back inside. So there's a lot of work that went into that. So it's a whole day's work setting up the generator to the uh, power unit, connecting the turbos and intercoolers back to the, local, uh, the power unit for the locomotive. After completing all the work from yesterday, we've now lifted the power unit back into the locomotive. Uh, the power unit's now sat perfectly inside the body. Massive uh, thanks for the Class 50 Alliance. Um, they've done the job. They own six locos themselves, so there's not a lot they don't own, know about these things. So yeah, their advice and, and everything over the, the last couple of years has been you know, fantastic. Um, and the effort they put in as well is unbelievable. Uh, well, the Class 50 Alliance has, has always uh, assisted with other uh, loco uh, Class 50 owners. Uh, so when, when time permits, we kind of downtime or on, work on our own locomotives and we go and assist uh, other groups where, when and when where we can. So it's always good to kind of help other groups because some of them don't have the uh, technical knowledge required to do such a lift as a power unit lift and set main generators up on, on their locomotives. So we're always happy to help when, when we can. I'm not going to rush it. Obviously, it's been a major job. Um, I want to make sure everything's OK. There'll be a lot of testing, uh, not just of the engine and generator, which have been out the loco, but nothing else within the loco has worked uh, in the last two or three years as well. I won't like to put a date on it, but Diesel Gala next year, fingers crossed. That may possibly be its first running day, first booked advertised running day. Hopefully people will come down and, and see the, the rewards that we've put in and if they've donated as well, the, the effort uh, or the money that they've, they've given as well. Well, a huge step forward in line getting its roar back once again. And as you can see, everyone who came to support us and signed their names, your names are still here and they will remain here for many years to come. So you can be safe in the knowledge that you've played your part in getting this engine back up and running once again. That's it from us this week, folks. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Thank you to everyone who chatted to us and we'll see you next time.